You are a cruel king, apparently, from what is said, as the stories go. That's the problem with stories, isn't it? I've had a problem with this, with my story. Because you can't tell all, not in a short space. You can't cover all the moments that build up. And we get bored covering old ground, even though that's all we do. These moments define us. Not like the pieces of paper that say who we are, where and when we're born, what our achievements are, and when we died. These state pieces of paper are for others' understandings and for placement within, to create a balance, and as such, they are immovable. They are not called stationary for nothing. They make us a definite article, so we belong somewhere, on some stage, and act accordingly in state, space and time, in a balanced and productive way. Does that make sense? Maybe not, but this is my story, or part of it, so I will continue. I cannot relate all, but I will relate a moment, a defining moment, and a defining piece of paper, so others could balance and understand. It is 1977, Jubilee year, a few months before the silver event. I am 13 and will be moving on soon. Passes new, as they say. A new flock. New sheep. New dogs. I have already been accepted a grade A student, with superlative comments attached. So why shouldn't they accept? No record of anything untoward, just defining marks on a series of defining pieces of paper showing the balanced beauty of state education. The dog's work has been done, and most successfully, the record shows this. All is good across the board, apart from one event. This event, however, will not be aired, except for a few lines on a piece of paper, for the head dog's personal record, and for the eyes of my parents. This will keep things nicely balanced for all concerned. Yet the reality of this, as the few handwritten lines on the unheaded note paper confirm, is quite the opposite. Your son is unbalanced. If this came to light, then all the good work would be negated. The cracks would show. The reality would come to light of a failing regime. So a few lines would suffice explaining my expulsion for the last few weeks of term, and this would balance all on paper, anyway. My tenure at the establishment was over. My role in this particular playground was done. The event that led up to this was my final act. Not a fit of anger, not an act of opportunism, a cold, calm and calculated act that had been formed over the past four years under this regime. It was ironic that the ethos behind the regimented dogs who had fought for their country, fought for the likes of us, for our freedom, to be who we were, was indeed contrary to their behaviour. This I learnt in four years of being different the first lesson came on my first day, a young, shy nine-year-old, who was different enough to stand out. Having asked a question, I was then asked if I was foreign, if I was gay, mocked for having a foreign name, then caned for my response. This was the start. This became the norm, daily. This was the balance of the regime. Dogs had fought against a culture of oppression, had fought to defend the right to be different. Now, in the vast cultural difference, they had become oppressors and bullies, although difference was the norm now, as they understood it. Others were more different, 
and thus easy prey. The playground was empty. It was lesson time. I equipped myself with paint, a grey undercoat, oil based, a stiff half inch brush, and walked out of the woodworking room onto the playground. Around this arena were the red brick Victorian facades of classrooms. I walked past one block and into the alcove. Behind me the headmaster's office. A window from this overlooked the scene. In front of me a wall. On the wall a perfect circle. Painted with craft some years before. A target in playground games. A target now for my final act. At first I made my presence known, tapping on the headmaster's window, gaining attention with a smile. I proceeded to decorate the circle with a capital A. The event lasted no more than 30 seconds. When done, I put the paint and the brush on the floor, went through the doors in the alcove, down the corridor to the headmaster's office. I knocked and entered and stood. The discourse came fast and thick. The cane in hand, the word strong. Throughout, I smiled. I held out my hand, received the punishment, and on the final stroke, grabbed the cane and snapped it. The note was written and sealed within an envelope. The deed was done. I smiled and left. I was unbalanced and happy to be defined as such. A short finale to a bigger play a moment, a defining moment for myself and for the head. His face said it all. He would remember that moment. His balance had shifted. He would not be the same. Myself, I consider it often. Many times I have found myself in a position of apparent balance that is in fact veiled imbalance, disguised, hidden, obscured by others. Whilst doing my MA, I related this account contextually, as I do now. Was the A a symbol of anarchy? The timing was correct. The symbol is an apt. Was it a definition of self? A straight A pupil. Was it territorial pissings? Or was it a fresh start? A new beginning? It was all and more. It was a break-up. It was a breakdown. Moreover, it was about the beauty of difference and the beauty of questioning, whether silent or otherwise. Silent questioning can break one, yet it can equally afford the possibility to understand. When offered the chance to question, we should use it, even if by doing so we are punished in some way. I cannot recall the question I was going to ask in that first lesson, though I have tried often. But the day I do recall, vividly, and many others like it, for me and for others. For I was not the only different one, and we were all quiet, all shy and all vulnerable. And so we were all a threat, obviously. And we all questioned, but remained silent. My final act was for all these, and was cathartic. I broke up and broke down many times in that period of my life, those formative years. And those years defined my character. The regime was normal. It was balanced, it was humdrum, and the moments I have related as unpoetic and unembellished as those times, reflective of the day-to-day -day routine, which many faced and do so now, although on, a, on different stages or playgrounds. And it is all about playgrounds and power. Many times since those days, since that moment, I have found myself in periods where I have called on that time as a benchmark of character. When defined in state, space and time by a piece of paper, designated balance, I question the position 
the role. There is little in life that is truly and fairly balanced. Just levels of unbalance. I embrace this unbalance. I embrace the difference.